All right, what is going on, everybody? We're back. This is week three of the BB Can 12 uh, season, and today I have two-thirds of the girly pops. We got uh, Renee and Shanae here. Uh, I'm, I guess I'll be the third member uh, for today, so the three of us, we're, we're in. I'm, the, I'm an official girly pop today. Uh, what's going on, guys? Let's start with Renee. What's new and exciting? Talk to me. What's going on? Nothing much. Just uh, I'm in school. I'm back in school. I've been doing the grind. It's like I have three weeks left. So just wrapping it up. First year law school, baby. That's amazing. It's doing a lot better than, uh, you know, law school, man. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't play around with that. That's pretty sick, man. So congrats on that. And Shanae, what's going on, fam? What's going on? Um, I'm just like working. My life is pretty much the exact same as before my brother, except for the fact that I am moving to Toronto in a couple months. So Oh, nice. Super exciting. I'm really excited. Um, and yeah, so I'm just working my butt off trying to save money to, before I like move across the country. That's sick. Yeah, Toronto's a good spot. Busy spot. Busy spot for sure. A lot of alum there. A lot of, you know, all that stuff. So I'm um, very happy for you ladies. Now we're going to get into the, the big brother stuff. We're going to get into this season. You guys were both on last season, as you guys, you know, for, for those that are, are coming in. Uh, they were both in last season. I, what, you guys went right to the end pretty much, right? You guys were pretty close to the end, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we were right after each other right, Renee? i was the sixth person I, left yeah yeah i gotta say so let's talk about this a little bit you guys had let's just say it as it is you guys are probably the most successful uh female alliance in the history of bb can we're gonna say it as it is uh the three of you guys crushed it you all made it very far and this year we have the big sisters what do you guys what are your thoughts on the big sisters before we get into all this stuff uh do you think there's a possibility they can stay together do you think it's broken do you think it was never a thing do you think they actually wanted to make it a thing do you think they just kind of used it to keep each other safe what are your guys thoughts on this uh let's go with uh, let's go shania first this time what are your thoughts on the girly pops and uh no sorry not the girly pops the uh big sisters and uh and all that I was so stoked when I saw all the girls coming together. I was like, oh, yeah, like, let's go. Um, but, man, I don't know. After this week, I, like, quite frankly, it's a little bit embarrassing. Like, mm -hmm. how so quickly it's just exploded on itself. And I think, I don't know if it's necessarily that it's girls that is the problem, but it's that it's such a big group. Mm -hmm. Because, like, inevitably, I think in big groups, it's so hard to, like, keep track of all the lies and then people get into their heads. Like, we, I think we're able to keep it so tight. And, like, we even had our problems with three. Like, mm -hmm. You know, like, there was times when we, like, didn't trust each other. Um, but because there's so many of them, I think that's really where they are struggling. I hope that they can get it together. But damn, like, it's just, it's this week was a doozy for them. That's for sure. And I, like, I was so excited. I'm still hoping, but it definitely was, uh, I don't know how that happened. What a wild ride. I mean, the last couple of weeks have been, you know, they had the seven strong. They were talking about going to seven, uh, you know, the last seven standing and, and, you know, we lost uh, two of them back to back, but we're going to get to that uh, in a minute here. Uh, Renee, what are your thoughts on the girl? Uh, sorry, I keep the, the big sisters. What are your thoughts on the big sisters and uh, and and all that, too? I think after this, like past week, it's just, you know, I let the first week the vote on Janine kind of like ride out and that was kind of disappointing. But then the second week, it's just like, damn, like the energy that the females brought into the season, I thought was on first glance, like some of the strongest, like, hmm. I'm, I want the girls' lines. I want to go after the guys. And, like, that energy was, like, so forward. I think even more forward than, like, the girls in our season because we were all, like, fun and, like, we liked the girl aspect to it. But that wasn't necessarily, like, the main strategy coming in. And I just feel like, again, just dismantling with, like, the numbers. Like, our season had, I, I think, a unique approach in the sense that, like, we were knocking off guy after guy after guy. Yes, the first, like, JM wasn't necessarily against the girls, but we were getting out these guy numbers and i think now with the dynamics that are left in the house i am worried for the girls i don't want to speak definitively because it is big brother things can change the girls right. can you know reign supreme like the girly pops were underestimated for the majority of the season until we started winning back to back to back um so i think there's definitely still some hope but is it really that big for me no because even the dynamics that we see, like we see now we have like Lexus, I think, and she's tied now with Matt somewhat. And like those interests are like competing interests and like she might protect him because of that. And so when you have the numbers way outweighed, because I think I was talking to Daniel C and we got into a little like tiffy argument about it because he's like, well, 
female alliances like you do you need just like all females in it like can't it just be like people like for the girls i was like it doesn't even necessarily mean it has to be like this huge big girls alliance that has to move together and like you're gonna have people that you don't trust within that alliance and like maybe those are the people that they had to cut but i think again when you have like people like dougie in there with matt with like elijah and all that stuff like no one's taking a shot at Elijah. So, like, that's a number there that could potentially be for the guys or swing to the guys if this narrative keeps going. So I am, I'm worried. I'm very worried for the girls' alliance. And again, like, in the girly pops, it took, like, a lot of work to get where we had to be because my perspective from, like, our alliance was, like, a little bit on the outs. I was always kind of, like, I don't know if they trust me 100%. There was, like, the things of the HOH on me. So, it, like, there were a lot of times in a group of, like, three that, like little stones being thrown in Mm -hmm. like that could completely like break the trajectory of like our season but i think now with like such a big group and you had all these like like donna and bailey and janine like we're so pro girls i got that energy so to see that break so fast yeah i don't know man i uh i I, I think i feel like pre-season this was the best chance to have like a, a, like a female alliance that's going to ride or die and do this stuff. There, there was so many preseason that were saying, we want the female alliance, female alliance. Uh, but like you said, I think seven is just way too, it doesn't even matter if it's, if it's all females or just seven people in general, everyone's going to have their own perspectives, their own gameplays, their own, the things they want to do, the people that they're going to like, the people they're not going to like seven people's a lot on any season, no matter what it is, you know, if all females are like just a mix, whatever it is. That's a lot of people to, you know, egos you have to maintain and massage. And, uh, like you say, you know, there's, there's Alexis and, um, and Matt, they're kind of, you know, becoming a thing or whatever it is, you know, like feelings and like real life emotions come into play too. that and you can't control that like people can go in i'm sure they're going in saying hey you know i'm going to go in and i'm just going to focus on the game well then they get there and they meet you know some they're like oh man i actually like this person or whatever it is you know what i mean i mean i'm sure you guys know i, I you know uh but that's how it is right that's just the reality of it uh and it can really start like fogging your 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 vision a little bit like oh man do i do i really like uh, you know, where, which way am I going to go? Am I going to go left with these people? Or am I going to go right with this? And then you're kind of stuck in the middle of these of these two groups that you actually equally like them both. But it's like you know, there's two different uh, two different groups. They're not necessarily aligned. Yeah, it's tough. I I, I think that I think it had the best chance. I just what I saw, and again, we don't know everything. And you actually, you guys were the first season uh, that did the dailies, right? So we don't know everything. We just know what we're being fed, and we're being funneled a certain you know narrative or direction or whatever. So we don't like perfect example with uh, Todd and Donna. Like, what was that? Where did that even come from? You know what I mean? Like like what I, you, that was a bigger blind side than the, the the vote man and like the whole thing you know so but yeah i screamed at my tv when that happened i was like what? yeah i was <laughs> yeah. i'm fucking here for it that was wild wild yeah that blew my mind like i completely and it's funny because on our season like robin santina had a little moment on week two like exit or whatever yeah. and for both of them. I didn't catch the kiss on both of them. I don't know. I was there live and then I was there watching us. The I still didn't catch. I was like, what do you mean what kiss? And they're like, did you not see what? And then I went back and I was like, ah! yeah, I think there's something brewing a little bit there. You know, they're, yeah. they're flirty, fun people. I yeah. surprised, like, Tom is, like a pretty monotone guy. So it, it was like a very... It was unexpected. It was unexpected. Like I, I just didn't. I never would have said Todd. I wouldn't. I, not nothing against them. I just. I didn't. I just. They're. They seem. I don't know. Different. I don't know. I just. I don't know what it is, man. I just. I would never. If you would have said, you know, Donna was in a showman's. Todd would not have been on my top three. You know what I mean? It would have been. There would have been other options. So. I feel like he's like a silent assassin. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's got game. He has some game in him. I'm telling you, man. It's it was. I was like, okay, like okay. I didn't see this coming, but but yeah, it was. Uh, but yeah, with the with the with the, uh, the big sisters, I think I think one of their big the biggest mistakes was I. I mean, for again, we just saw the dailies. We don't. We weren't there. We don't know what's really going on. Uh, but uh, I, every time I saw them on the dailies, they were either just all together. Or all they would talk about is the girls, the girls, the girls. I, from what I saw, they weren't branching out and having just other conversations that didn't rely on just the girls, the girls, the girls. Like just having those like basic conversations in the house, you know, talk about people's cats or whatever you want to talk about, you know. But like it was always like the girls, we got to do this. The girls, we got to do this. And sometimes, I mean, as, as sometimes, yeah, you got to reassure people, of course. But uh, sometimes it can be like so just like beaten into you. It's like, 
you know, the girls, we got to get this guy, the girl. And it, it almost becomes like, oh my God, it's annoying. Like I'm, I'm tired of hearing this or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm just using that as an example. It could be anything. Um, and yeah. And then obviously the big X factor, I think that people didn't realize is spicy. V. That is the biggest X factor. I've known spicy for, I don't know how many years now, uh, since her season, she is a massive X factor. Uh, I hope these people, I mean, I don't know if they watched her season, you know, uh, but they got to know how she works and she is chaotic. Like, like I'll tell you, if, if she has 15 forest fires around her, that's not enough for her. She's bored. She needs 30 plus, you know, it's like, Oh, there's only 15 fires around me. I need more. She'll throw gas on it because that's, that's how she just gets excited. Like that's just, what's her thing. Uh, she's just chaotic. You know, she's, she's just bored. I think she's just bored. Things were going too smooth and she's like, Hey, let's throw some uh, gas on this fire. And, uh, but like I, the, the fact that she, uh, what she did with Donna blew my mind because Donna was never coming after her. And, you know, and I feel like, like maybe V was just really ice, um, insulated. She has, you know, Anthony working for her, not for her, but with her, uh, she's got the hot chocolate, the hotter chocolate, the big sisters. Uh, she's, she has these little relationships everywhere, but, um, I feel like, you know, when you're aligned with everybody, it's like, you know, the saying, if you're aligned with everybody, you're aligned with nobody. As soon as people start crossing notes and stuff, I feel like she's going to get figured out. What do you guys think of uh, V's play uh, gameplay right now? Uh, who do we go with last? Let's go with uh, Renee this time. What do you think of, uh, of spicy V's gameplay or her HOH? Let's just start with her HOH. Uh, did she need to win it? Let's start with that. Greedy there for sure. I think she was, first off, I have to say, I love Spicy. I mm. think she is a fun, fun human to be around. I think she's so kind hearted and I think she really means well. But you put her in a setting like Big Brother and like being the fan that she is, um, she knows how to stir it up. She oh, knows yeah. How to stir it up. And I think um, on her HOH, like when she first won it, I was like, why would she do that? Like she's placed so nicely in the house. She doesn't need to draw that attention. But then what she was starting to do with her HOH and the chaos she was creating and like the fights that she was like pinning people against it, each other. I, she had the house in a chokehold for, there was a hot mm. second there that she had this little moment that she had the house in like the palm of her hands to be able to spin these like narratives and come up with like this randomly, like pick a day. I'm going to go to Vivek and, and tell him that, you know, I know this a lot and, and do all these things and have everybody kind of like fall in line to it. So I was like, you know what? I kind of see the method to her madness. Mm -hmm. and then she goes and puts donna up and even when she was like looking at it shows in the episode she's looking at like that screen in the hoh room and she's looking at donna like and she's like don't do it don't blow up your game girl i think she was like waiting for something to fall mm -hmm. on somebody to to do that i think i think she would have done it to somebody because like the way she so quickly popped onto it i don't know i just feel like she i would think that she has like a little bit more thought behind it but then if you're gonna do a move like that you have to stand by it even if you're doubting it, you can't be going to people after and being like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know if this is that. I, I get it if you're doing it to Donna. If she can somehow pull the votes and like a miracle happens and Elijah walks out the door, which if you're sending out Elijah on week two on your move, like there's just so many things that started to work against her when she put Donna up and then she starts trying to go back. And then they almost thought like that was the first time I think I was telling Nene or Daniel or somebody that that was the first time in a very long time in Big Brother where I was on the edge of my seat for a vote. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I genuinely thought she Donna got the votes on her end. But then again, you go back to Spicy's gameplay and Donna didn't get the votes. And now it's like you went back on your word. You didn't want to get her out. And then you riled all these people around. You start these stories like I think it's going to bite her in the butt sooner than later. And it, it sucks because she was so well placed as an all star. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think I think her gameplay was just she didn't have to do any of this. Uh, but I agree. I do see the method of her madness. You know, she's trying to pit people against each other. So uh, it keeps like her enemies kind of apart and they can't really, you know, uh, exchange notes and stuff like she's like she always goes up and she's like, oh, this person's talking about you or whatever. Trying to gain that trust. Like, yeah, I'm telling you a little bit of information Then she'll go to the other side. But hey, this person's talking about you. But, uh, you know, this is only week two or three. Uh, you can get away with that a little bit now because people aren't really comfortable with each other and they're not really seeing the gameplay. But once you get into like week four, five, six, people like their 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 claws are in, their feet are planted, they're players now, they're experienced, and uh, they're not going to fall for that. I mean, we think anyway. Um, Shania, what do you think about the HOH? Should she have won this? I mean, I, I say won this. She was basically given it. I, that's another thing too I want to say is like she didn't really win anything. They just didn't spit in her tube, which is uh, you know kind of funny to say in a way, but uh, they didn't spit in her tube and. Uh, 
you know, it is what it is. But I, I, I got to say, I love V. I, I do. I, I've hung out with her many times. She's chaotic. She's just as chaotic in the real world. Uh, you got to love it. I, I you know, I, I respect it. But, like, it doesn't translate well in the game. You want to keep the peace a little bit. Uh, but it's entertaining. So, uh, Shanae, what are your thoughts on the, on the week and, and V and, uh, and all that? Um, well, okay, yeah. First off, preface, freaking love Spicy V. She's a hoot. She's hilarious. But I think she is, like what weaving so many lies that she's starting to believe them herself and i feel like that's gonna like renee said it's gonna bite her in the butt down the road like i i was so impressed with her when she was you know getting everybody all worked up and she's just like watch sitting there like watching all that go down but in one of her drs she you know she's not speaking to anyone she's in her dr she goes um donna made me put v back on the block mm. i was like no no she didn't you concocted a lie to make donna want you to put him on the block so i i feel like she's already losing track of her lies and that has that has a timeline in the mm -hmm. house i feel or anywhere right like you can only lie so much that you're gonna forget even what was the point of truth and on top of that i am shocked Ooh. at how easily mm -hmm. all of the people in the house are believing her and again like we've all mm -hmm. said we don't believe everything so who knows what other conversations are happening but like i watched spicy season and this was a couple years ago i don't even remember it that well but what i do remember is that she was a wild card chaotic just like her personality i would not be trusting that girl if i was in a house with her so it blows my mind that people are just like eating up what she's saying i think it goes to show that she's such a good social player mm -hmm. but yeah like i walk i just rewatched the three episodes i've already watched them i was like i gotta watch them this morning and she, in her dr she literally believed her own lie and i was like that's crazy and even um and another point this she was saying to donna so who knows what she was thinking but she was like you made me put vivek on the block <laughs> yeah that's she didn't she didn't so i just it's interesting i think there is she's gonna i i like worry that she's gonna unravel and you can already see it like she's second guessing her decisions and this is kind of like offside but truthfully like i anthony is the backbone of all of this which is wild to me mm. you know and he is showing me like again i watched anthony's season a long time ago i don't really remember much of his gameplay so when everyone was like oh he's one of the best players one of the best players i was like i don't remember that because i think he was so overshadowed by how amazing dane was that's in mm -hmm. my memory anyway but i'm seeing now how what people are talking about because his ego drives me a little bit bonkers <laughs> but he's got the rights to have it because people are eating out of the palm of his hand even spicy yeah. you know she's making all these decisions she's destroying her alliances and dougie's just walking in there saying no you did good you did good and he's just like walking away from it all so i don't know she's so chaotic she makes great tv i will give her that but i do think she's gonna <laughs> The emotional side is going to get to her. I think it's already starting to. I, I like how you said, and I, I agree with, I, I agree, I agree. I think what you're saying, like, she has a really good social game. I think she's good socially, but she's just too chaotic. If she could just reel it in and, like, have that social game, but have, like, the, I don't know what the right word is. I don't want to say, I don't want to say, like, mental. So that's not the right word, but it's, like, have that social game, but have the, like, social awareness to, like, keep it in check a little bit. Like, don't be so chaotic. Don't, like, start putting your allies on the block and don't call this person as your target. Like, if she could have that social game that she has, because she's a good talker. Like, she's really good at talking to people. But like you say, she's lying about this and that and that. You're going to lose track. Like, this is week two or three. We're so early in the game. And, and lucky for her, she's had safety. Her and Anthony have had safety. I think the minute they don't have that safety, um, they're going to be, you know, they're they're going to be put in check a little bit. Um, I, do you guys know who won HOH this week? I do. Okay. Okay. So, I, well. I so. Okay, we'll chat about that after. We'll get to that. We'll get to that after. But so, like, you know, coming into the house, Anthony and V come in. They have one week of safety. I think that's fair. I think one week is fair. I think if they came in without safety, they'd be, you know, out the door. I think if they had more than one week safety, it's too long because then they can just kind of do what they want to do. I also think they haven't had any. Um, they haven't had their backs against the wall at all yet, right? Anthony had HOH week one. Anthony and V are very, very good friends out of this house. Like very good friends. It's like going in with a ride or die right on day one. Like you, you have that that outside experience together the outside relationships it's very different i when i went back in season five i knew some people some i liked some i didn't so we had that like 
uh, pre-existing relationship, good or bad, and it did affect the game inside because, you know, oh, I can kind of trust this person. We don't have to have those like weird talks at first, get to know, we can just get right to business. And that's what Anthony and V did. They came in day one as, from as far as we saw. They're right of business. They're like talking game and strategy, pulling people in when everyone's trying to figure out what they're, what they're, oh, what's your name again? Oh, is it Todd? Is it, what is your name? And, uh, you know, oh, you have two cats. Cool. Like, like they're having these like weird conversations when Anthony and V are already like on the ground running like, hey, this is what we're going to do now. We got to pull this person in, da, da, da. And they had that. They're so comfortable with each other on night one that they can have those conversations openly with each other where you know how it is when you first in the house. You don't know. Can I talk to this person that way? Do, like, what is our relate? Do they like me? Can I trust them? Can I not? If you will go on day one with that, like a hundred percent trust, I, mean, I shouldn't say a hundred, but you know, a ninety percent trust in someone that's huge. And and I think that that big advantage. So I think that one week of safety is good. Anything more was a little bit much. But yeah, Anthony won HOH and V was safe. So the week one, they didn't have anything to worry about. Week two, you know, they give it to V. So they haven't had their backs against the wall yet. So I think they've been able to play the way they are because they they have no fear. They can play without fear because he know, you know, V know, well, first of all, he, Anthony couldn't put her up. Uh, and then week two, Anthony knew that she wouldn't put him up, that V wouldn't put him up. So they haven't had to play with fear. But, you know, if certain people win this week, and I know who won this week, but, uh, and that's still up in the air, you know, their backs technically could be up against the wall. Maybe, you know, and, and I don't think it's going to go the way we think this week. I think people have, a, a, you know, think this is going to be the target. This is the pawn. Sure, I think that could be how it starts. You never know because V gets bored and she could just say something for no reason and and uh, and, and flip the house again for no reason. But uh, but yeah, I, I think her noms, um, you know, starting with Vivek and uh, and turning on the girls and putting up Donna, I just, I, I don't understand that move. I never will. I won't even pretend to understand it. I love V, but that was a tr- great for TV, great for entertainment, but uh, absolutely atrocious move. And I, I don't know. I don't know what she was thinking, but but uh, you know, that chaos in her head, I think it makes sense to her. And, and sometimes it's, you know, when when it's when you have that play in your head and you see the vision and when maybe we don't you know but uh, maybe it makes sense to her I don't, I don't know so what do you want to see happen um this week after you know donna well first of all what did you guys think of donna what did you guys think of donna in her game donna i think i think she was very much for the girls and she could see through a mm-hmm. lot of the smoke and fire that was either being put up by this person or that person and even you know anthony himself like Again, very persuasive person. Like Janine said when she left that house because um, uh, Arissa was talking to her and saying, why didn't you do more? Why didn't you campaign and this and that? And the the things that Spicy and Anthony are saying, like, you have to understand, like, they're dealing with super fans and they're still believing. I think Dennis can kind of see through it, mm-hmm. but the majority of them are really Dennis. just like falling into it. Like they said, like one, oh, I love the shirt. They mm-hmm. said literally like day one, they all got together and they said, there's all stars coming in. We're gonna get them out. We're gonna get them out. We're gonna get them out. Granted, yeah. the first week, like the dynamic of how they set up the first week and them coming into the thrones, like all that stuff, it maybe creates a little bit of you know, yep. it shifts a little yep. bit of perspective and things like that. Like a lot of the season is centered around Spicy and yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Um. So like, I don't know if they're not taking shots for other reasons or they're scared to like you know step on toes for those reasons. But you're with all these super fans and they're like. Yes, Anthony. Yes, V. Like, I mm-hmm. come, like, even Lexus with V just like taking things about Donna and then not going to Donna. And like, and again, you don't know, you don't try, like, whatever. But I like Donna overall. Um, I think she was very, like, very forceful with, like, or, and too trusting, I think, almost of a lot of the girls in the group because she would go to V and, and be like, Dougie needs to go, Dougie needs to go, which, so valid so valid at some point for your game he's gonna have to go mm-hmm. but the mm-hmm. fact that you didn't put like like there's not one inkling that you think there even if i thought there was a shred of a doubt that those two could be working together i am not telling v about anything dougie related i'm talking dougie up to i'm doing and i think it's like those things that add to it and like again v has been playing this whole like facade that she's actually believing at this point right because it, it becomes exhausting like the emotional side to do that i even think with the person who won hoh this week like spicy saying like i don't know if i have it in me for another week big brother like i'm drained kind of thing so i think she just ended up falling into this thing and donna just i think she played well i think she campaigned great um i think she was there to like fight but i again when you're viewed as like a strong player and you're fighting that hard too there's like pros and cons to that right i think it would have been great for the girls and i liked seeing her on tv um but i think like eventually she would have had like a shot or a blindside on her 
eventually. I just didn't expect it to be this soon. What's yeah. what's we two and blind sides? Like that was we, <laughs> I mean it worked in my favor, let me tell you. You know. <laughs> I need to get blind side on my week, but yeah, that's, I'm sad to see this one go through. That's the one thing I got to say too. It's like I'm, I'm surprised how many people are telling V how much they don't like Anthony. Like they got to know by now. These two are together. How do you not see? I mean, for us, it's very blatant and very obvious. But I don't know how these people don't see it. I don't know how they don't know. Um, they came in together. They obviously know each other. Um, they're the two all stars. They're gonna be, you know, they're each other's like uh, allies, and they have the experience. They're gonna work together. And if you give, and the thing that I'm noticing is they're give that everybody else is giving them all the information, so they know everything because you know one side's going up to v saying everything blah 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 blah. the other side's going up to anthony blah 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 blah. and then it's like they can just come together and be like all right this is who's working with who this is happening blah 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 and then she's like yeah and this is happening this is happening and they literally have the entire game in their hands how do you you know and and it's it's not it's almost the new player's fault for doing it because they're the ones that are feeding them everything. And, but, to, but to their credit, that's what you want. That's what makes a good player. If someone comes up to you and is like, Hey, I want to tell you something. I trust you. It's like Anthony has this aura about him and he's a good, I know Anthony, he's, he's, he's great. And, uh, he has that aura. He does where it's like, you're just going to talk to him and he has that soothing, big guy, soothing voice. It's like, it's just, it's, it's really interesting to see it play out in real time. Uh, he's doing a good job, but again, I don't think they've had their backs against the wall. So, so what I want to see, and, and again, I, I don't want to see them go out. I'm, I'm glad they're there. I'm happy for them that they're, that they're playing, but I want to see how they play with their backs against the wall because it's very easy to play when everything's going your way and you can do whatever you want. You can start arguments with people because they can't do anything about it. But if you're in danger, you can't, you have to change the way you talk because you know, if, if people are like, yo, let's just get Anthony out and he's on the block, he can't, you know, he's going to have to change the way he talks or else they're going to be like, all right, see you later. You know what I mean? No, yeah. like, uh, sorry to interrupt again, but no, no, you're good. That- Exactly. Like coming from, you know, I had a lot of time up on the block. Okay. It's a very different game when you're playing on the block. And I have this conversation often because you're not, you're playing defensively. You can't play offensively. You can't make moves. You can't go farther. You're when your back is against the wall, you have to approach things very, very differently. And almost with like a caution that people can't read. And I think like, again, Anthony had a great run on his season and he didn't really have that flame under his ass because he never touched the block. And that's a great game resume thing. But to play on there or to play when, you know, you know that people are talking about you negatively and that they're coming after you in a certain sense, it creates like, especially with spicy and stuff, it creates like, it makes you spiral. It makes you go into like these places that maybe you haven't touched before in that game um so to be able to think and like pat like surpass that i think i would have a lot of respect for just because again like when things are working out then you you can play you can piece together for next week and this and that but when you're in hot water and you can only see the next two days what can you do with that when right. all the votes are stacked against you or when people are talking about you or throwing out your name and saying that you know this person is like ready to go or like whatever or i'm ready for this person to go so yeah, I think that's a great point, and I would love to see. I don't want to see them in danger, but I would like to see like when people aren't believing you and everything that you're saying. How do you switch up your gameplay? Because you can't play it the exact same way. I think Anthony is very confident in, in his gameplay and that it will work till the end. But I don't know. I don't know. I uh, yeah, uh, very good point. Like I say, it's like you, you said, you have to play more defensively. Right now, he's not in danger. He can be off uh, play offensively. He can say what he wants to people. And try to like chip that information out of them because he's safe and he knows it. He's not he's not an option. So he can kind of just you know not not really dismiss people, but he ha- he's in the power seat right now. Whereas when you're on the block, you're not on the power seat, and then you have to kind of be like, hey guys, like let's get some votes together, kind of thing. You know, now when the, the table turns. Um, but yeah, so Shanae, what do you think about the uh, executive veto? What do we think this is? When do you think it's going to come into play? Um, what do you think that we don't even know? We don't know anything about it. We don't know what it does. We don't know when it's coming in. What are our thoughts? What do you think? the executive veto is yeah sorry i have not heard of this you got to fill me in okay so there's an executive veto which they they kind of talked about i think i don't know if it was at the premiere or just the pre-house yeah Yeah, it was like i think it was even like the pre-house like thing and there's an executive veto that's i guess coming in play i i I guess but um they haven't mentioned it they haven't said what it does when it's coming in uh and and my opinion on it is they're probably going to save it for when you know v or anthony are in danger then this 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 veto is going to magically just oh by the way just by chance you know it's this week guys uh they're safe because let's be honest they're the anchor they're the ones that are you know they're they're the stars of the show and they're the all-stars and uh, but yeah, so yeah, if it, I, nobody really knows what it is. So it, I know it's kind of a tough question to answer because 
We don't even know what it is. We just know there's an executive veto. And I mean, were we voting for it? Do they have to do something for it? Do, like, what? We don't know. We don't know. I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that there's only 14 of them. Because that's really thrown me off. Like, I thought maybe they were going to be doing some sort of, like, battle back this season. Uh, but obviously not, because mm -hmm. we know that, like, Donna and Janine are both out. So I, there's no way that that's going to happen. But I wonder if it's something like something like that. I don't know. But the, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, but, yeah, it wouldn't surprise. Or maybe they'll do a sort of executive veto battle back thing down the line. I don't know. But yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, no idea. They didn't tell us anything. They haven't said when it's coming in. Like for me personally, I like when Big Brother, ha they're very transparent, but you know, they're not. It's a business at the end of the day. Uh, that executive veto is going to come in when they want it to come in. And it's like surprise kind of thing. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about uh, Anthony and V being chosen to come back? Uh, is that something you guys would want to do? If you got asked, would you go back? What do you think about them being the choices? What are, what are our thoughts? What do you think? Shane, let's go with you because I gave you a tough question there. I would go back in a freaking heartbeat, which I like hands down i would do it again um that's full i don't would you not renee oh no no i i i, I agree i'm like on the i'm on the fence i am on oh, the fence. I you said not me i mean yeah. look like i know what i'm signing up for so but yeah i would love to have a second chance um so call me big brother uh but yeah i think it's awesome that spicy and dougie were asked back people all mine are i find so frustrating because i feel like they would have a problem with whoever was asked back mm -hmm. regardless of who it was you know like people saying oh like they're not all stars blah 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 sure they are like i don't know i i find it so frustrating when people say when people just undermine other people's games like there's a million ways to play this game and they both killed it they're both names that if you watch big brother you know both mm -hmm. of their names so i was stoked to see them back and like super so i mean i i've, I've did what's the tea with spicy v and like she's a friend of dan's so her and i like talk on instagram a lot so i was stoked that it was her um but yeah i was actually surprised they brought dougie back because i feel like Anyone who makes it to final two, I personally feel like you've kind of had your shot. Like you've made it as far as you can go. Um, but yeah, no, I was so back. What about you, Ray? What do you think? Ah, oh, great selection. I think for a season that's structured the way it is, you need forces like Dougie and Spicy. Fortunately, unfortunately, whatever that means for whatever. If you're having an all-star season, you can kind of throw in like different mixes and like have them you know see like the new sprout up of it but when you're the center of a season like you have to trust someone in the skills that they're going to be able or know them to a good extent that they're going to be able to at least get as far as they need like I I don't know I feel like I would love to like go back at some point I don't know if I would be ready to go back for this season but I'm speaking for myself personally like I think it would be someone with like the narrative that they had in their season to come back and be like a center like pillar of you know a season like that it's a lot of weight to carry and you have to do a lot so I think you have the calm and you got the storm you got the bet you got the talker and you got you got the chaos you got the friendly and then you got like the certain like I think they're really good like balance to each other and i think i mean even their relationship it, it it gives them an edge a little bit in the game and stuff so i thought it was great um for like it being the hollywood season and and all that stuff so i i love the selection i was i i had a feeling it had to be like they would be in the pool of people that would be chosen for that right for sure for so sure. Yeah, yeah i i loved it i loved the casting yeah i agree you both made really good points you both made really, really good points. And yeah, like like people were complaining about the All-Stars. Probably, yeah, they're not All-Stars. But they have a role to play. They each have their role. And 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 V, her role is to to entertain. That's what her role is. That's why she got cast. She didn't get cast to win the show. Like, no, we know we're not, she's not going to win. Uh, and no disrespect to her. I think V is great. But she's just too chaotic of a player. I, I don't see a, a, a world where she can win. Uh, and that's not a, a shot at her or any disrespect. I have nothing but love and respect for her. But she's just so chaotic that she can't keep this up for 10 weeks. There's no way. I mean, and, and I hope she can, but I just don't, I don't see a world where she can. She's just way too chaotic, but it's so fun to watch. And I love that as a viewer, I love it. Uh, where Anthony is the complete opposite. He's more calm. I, I, I personally don't even think he has a chance to win. Uh, he's just too big of a target. And I think, you know, sure, maybe they're going to keep him for a while, but there's only so, so far you can go with that. And I just, I think people are aware of who he is, what he did the first time. Um, I, I feel like he makes a lot of the same, like uh, when he's in a room and Anthony's my boy, he's a, he is a friend 
friend of mine. So, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say this, but it's like when he's in the one-on-ones with people, he has the exact same conversation with everybody. It's the exact same thing that comes out of his mouth. So if, if you're telling the same thing to everybody and the second they'd be like, well, you know, Anthony's telling me that. And then someone else is like, well, actually he's telling me the same thing. Well, he's telling me that too. And then they're like, well, then who is he really loyal to? And that's when you get caught. And I think uh, they're going to catch up soon. Right now, I think it's working a little bit. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe they're not saying it because they know that he's not an option. Uh, but I think that's going to change soon enough. I think he's going to get caught uh, sooner than later um, kind of thing on that. What are you guys' thoughts on Anthony's game? You think uh, he's got it in him? What do, you, what do you think? Do you think he has a chance to win? Do you think Spicy has a chance to win? I guess everyone has a chance. I shouldn't say they don't, but I think it's a tough go. Uphill battle. Yeah. I think with um, Anthony's week, um, because what he said he's very open with the fact that he came in saying, like, I'm just going to do what I did and do it again and do it even better and kind of thing. And I think it's hard keeping the same gameplay for two mm. seasons, right? And um, so I think with his first week, I was very like, oh, damn, like, now I see, like, it coming back and it's working. Like, it's working really well and he has control and he had you know, like nothing was out of his, his reach. Like everybody was coming to him. He was having all these conversations, but I think now the success of his first week and even like, even the whole thing of like the players picking you and doing this and like all that kind of jazz, it, it feeds and, and you know, the whole season's built around you. It feeds into this, like, you know, persona and character that like, I am this like mm. BB can God. Right. And you can see that translate a little bit in his conversations I love Dougie. I think he's the sweetest ever. You can tell him about anything. Like he's always going to give you a hug. He's going to be so friendly. But you know, in some of these conversations, it, they are hard to watch. I think, oh, yeah. especially with yep. such a strong like female presence specifically, and like coming from you know our season and that being like a really big like center and trying a thing that we wanted to push. Like hearing the way he talks, and it's like, have you? I, I'm specifically referring to a digital daily conversation with Bailey because Bailey, you know what? That girl is chaotic, but I love her. I want to see her go far. Why? Because she's hilarious. She has great TV. I think, like, she hasn't even scratched the surface, but she gets into it a lot with Anthony. This is where I'm going with this. And he's like, have you watched my season? Do you know what I've done? And it's like, if I was coming back as an all-star, and even if I had, like, a great edit, good rap, like, played well, made it to final two, whatever, I'd be downplaying that. 100%. He's using it so much because the season itself and the production itself is so centered around you. Like how you downplay that spotlight. And I think he's actually been like doing it up to his detriment. So it's like, do you know how I've like, do you understand like when you play this game, like blah, 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 this and that. And so I, I, I think he has it in him if he finds a way to like completely wash and rewrite his like what he's already constructed. But because he's like going along with like his past narratives and being the center and then this and then that, like I see him actually like, I see that biting him in the butt before spicy because the one thing that spicy has going for her, which I am going to like root for her a bit in the sense is that I think a lot of people see her as like willing to like follow this and like go along. Like she is this all-star and like this character of a player and she brings the crazy and she brings the fun, but she brings the crazy and the fun. Like they're not seeing like, I mean, we're not even really seeing like where the strategy is going sometimes, but I think she can actually probably slide a bit farther than Anthony in that sense because there mm-hmm. is like this comfort with spicy. Like people have their defenses up now a bit with Anthony, but I think with spicy, like she's still getting all the information. They're like even like, oh, you know, like I gotta tell you about this. And we gotta put Anthony on. Okay, I just met with this person, and so she still has that like transparent like flow going in it in and out, even though she is completely you know, making it her, her own thing and running wild with it. But I think that's the one thing that, I, I mean, comparing their games, because I, between Anthony and Spicy, because I think Anthony, if he keeps talking the way he's talking, like, I think it's gonna, it's not gonna work for him. And I just, I don't know if that was just, like, built up for him, like, to fall into kind of thing, because he was so hyped up of the season. And he's such a big, like, presence. But I'd be trying to downplay that, mm-hmm. like, I just came from last season. I'm still like mentally not there. Like I, I'm literally, I can't play comps. Like I would be using any like weakness of mine to be like, yeah, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Like hundred percent. I know she can't maybe necessarily play it up to that extent, but like to be like, Oh yeah, that like makes sense. Like, I don't really know what to do in this situation. This is so different from my season. Like, anything like that like he alludes to that but then he also like makes it clear like i know what i'm doing and where i'm navigating so it's like 
How we did. That? So that, uh, that's a very, very, very good point. And, uh, and I see the same thing all the time. He's just, they, both of them, V and Dougie keep talking about, Oh, on my season, on my season, on my season, like you have to stop reminding these people about your season. Like let them forget. They're not going to forget your attorney, obviously, but like stop reminding them what you did. Like you let, let them forget that. Let them see you as this new player. This is them now. Uh, very, very good point. Like when I went back, uh, from, and there is, there is advantages and disadvantages. Like I said, when you, when you play, um, and, and for these players, like, like Anthony only played a few seasons ago. Uh, v, actually, I don't know. V only played a few seasons ago. Anthony played, I don't know, five, six seasons ago. I don't know what it was now, but, um, but you know, like these players should know who they are and how they play. And if you keep reminding them, yeah, I, I'm, I did this on my season, I did that. You're just putting uh, to, the way I see it. I agree. They're just putting a bigger target on you. It's like, yeah, you did do this. Yeah, you did do that. Yeah, you did make it the final two. Yeah, you did manipulate. Like, you got to stop reminding them. That's the way that that I see it um, as well. Now, do you guys want to talk about HOH this week and what we think is going to happen? Do you guys want to get to that point? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to do some spoilers now. So, you know, that's uh, you've been warned, okay? We're doing spoilers. Okay. So, uh, do you want to say, okay, who do you, Shanae, do you know who the HOH is? It's Vivek, right? It's Vivek, yeah. So, he won HOH. I like I like that he won. I, I hope he, okay. I'm stoked. I love an underdog. <laughs> yeah, talk to me, Shanae. What do you think of this guy? Like, I want to know, what do you think of Vivek? What do you think of his game? What should he do? What does he need to do? I feel so bad for him. Oh yeah. my God. When he was sitting on the floor of the HOH room and he was like, what's happening? I was like, oh my God, this man is going to need counseling when he gets out of the house. Like he is being gas lit. I do think he's being like a little bit silly sometimes, like for him to run in there and just assume that Anthony's going to be his number one. Like that's wild. Like we were just saying, like you should know who this player is. You should know that he knows spicy and that like, I don't I would just have those assumptions going in. Um, I mean, easy to say that sitting on the outside. But I have a soft spot for the guy. Like, he seems so nice. I love an underdog. Like, I love a on the block to HOH story. Give me that all day. I eat num num num. I eat it up. So I'm here for it. I think, honestly, I... I, as much as we say, like, we're rooting for Dougie and Spicy, like, I'm rooting for the newbies. <laughs> like, you know? Look what I got. Look, I got my I Team Dennis shirt on, you know? Yeah, yeah. like, Dennis, it seems just, like, I think he's awesome. Because, he's he's, like, he just, I feel like he's he's a super fan. He sees through the BS a little bit. I'm excited for him to get more screen time. The fact that he just won two vetoes is awesome. And, anyway, that's yeah. a side note. But yeah, no, I'm here for Vivek's win. I think it's so, it's just like quintessential big brother when someone's on the outs and then suddenly they have the power. And maybe, the, maybe my hope, I don't think it's what's going to happen, but my hope would maybe we will see Spicy and Dougie sweat a little bit because it doesn't make for good TV or a good mm. story to just watch them be the king and queen of the castle. Like, I'm not here for that. I want to watch them sweat. You know, like Renee and I played pretty much the entirety of the game with our backs against the wall, especially Renee being on the block the whole time. And it it's a sh true show of character. I think it speaks more to your game when you're fighting for your life than if you're just constantly in the good book. So I'm stoked to see what he's going to do. I just hope that he doesn't just like fall in line with whatever Dougie says. Um, this is again, kind of an offside, but Avery, I was someone I was super stoked about. And what I've seen from her thus far, I mean, there's so much more game to play, but she's just eating up everything that Spicy and Dougie are saying to her. And it's left me kind of like wanting more from her. Mm -hmm. So I hope that Vivek for his HOH just takes some like agency. And, you know, yes, you kind of have to appease people in the house, but also like, fuck it, do what you want. You might never get an HOH again, you know, like. I love the take. I love the take. I love the take. And I, I agree. I, I hope. And then, like I said, I, I'm sure as much as I'm cheering for the, the, the returning players, V and Anthony, I agree. I want to see them sweat a little bit. I want to see them play from their heels and, and see how they get out of this. If V gets nominated, that house is going to be an absolute dumpster fire. Like 
it's going to be chaos. And I, you know, I kind of want to watch it. I mean, you know, when I'm in the house, I like peace, you know, I want everybody calm and, you know, cause you can, you can see things better, but when, you know, uh, when you're on the outside watching in, I'd love chaos, like burn that place. Let's go. So, um, I'd like to see them play with their backs against the wall a little bit. I agree with you. I, I hope Vivek, here's the thing. I, I love Vivek. I think this guy is literally one of the nicest humans on this entire planet. He's such a, you could tell he's got like a good soul, a good heart. He's just a good person. And I love that. I, I'm here for it. I'm cheering for him. I love that. But his gameplay just isn't there for me, man. Like, I just feel like he's just, he just opens up, man. He just tells everybody everything. And and I hope that he can walk away with this HOH after this HOH with at least a little bit more like power or better position. But I just, I hope he keeps some cards close to his chest because he's just so open. Like he'll have a talk, he'll have a conversation with someone and then like immediately go to someone else and be like, I just had the best conversation with whoever. This is what we talked about. And it's like, no, 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 relax. Like keep that to yourself, you know? Uh, but uh, speaking of relax, uh, when, when he said that to Bailey, I mean, you know, it, it never has it ever worked, guys. Just a tip for all the guys out there. Never tell a girl to relax. Do not tell a girl to relax. It, <laughs> it's not gonna Bailey, happen. Bailey was a cry and a scream from all girls that day when he told her to relax. It was like a message from all girls through Bailey. Um, yeah, I. You know what? Um, I have like an interesting take on on Vivek because when he first came in and he's in that pantry trying to tell Dougie how to run his game, I'm like, boy, you don't even like what like even if you have that confidence which is great I think he has really good confidence he just doesn't know how to like control it like he's just unapologetically himself and now I'm starting to learn that of him because at first he just came off as like a cocky to me like just like super cocky like I know it like man you gotta do this you gotta do that and just talking everywhere like everywhere like no one is going to continue to give you any information if you're caught con- like they mm-hmm. catch you on the screens they catch you over here they, they they're all talking together about you and i think him coming to be like a target in the house was like a result of that um like that kind of behavior um but i like the turn of events now um with him like i think actually with watching the dailies um i think vivek actually has a better like pulse on the game than people think because the way he talks about the game when he's with Dennis or he's with Todd he's actually saying things he's not sticking confidently to them like it's all speculation but when he's saying them like he's actually on it more than anybody that I've heard talk in the house on the dailies granted and he's like you know I really think like Anthony was feeding this to V but then he was like or sorry Dennis was saying that to Vivek which Vivek was saying but I also think like Avery and Kayla are bringing things to V. Like, I've seen them around in these. But So he has these little things that he's actually picking up, but he's not stopping to sit for a second with himself to be like, what does this mean? And let me piece it together in my head. He's just running and talking automatically. And like, again, from someone that talked a lot, I get it. Like, you want to run and tell people and you want to be like, what does this mean? Like, help me figure it out. But like, in a game like this so early on, you got to sit with some of that information to yourself sometimes and really like look at the game. Um, I, I have a soft spot for him just with, like, how his game has proceeded for, like, the first few weeks. Like, being on slot for that long plus the block. Right. Let me tell you. Right. My, I thought I was going to have to get airlifted by day 20 outside. When Dan put, put me back on the block, I was like, someone literally get me the F out of here. Like, it is very hard to be in that position. And plus on slot for that whole time. Like, I was only on for, like, three days. I have um to go from that that quickly to get the HOH. Major kudos. Um, but I am worried that what are you going to do with this HOH? Because you know what? Granted, even if he could do some great work and maybe change a little bit of his perception, but people are kissing your ass right now because you are HOH. Mm-hmm. You need to make a, a move that's going to shake up everything so that you can actually rebalance yourself versus saving peace in the house at this point and keeping like this because then people aren't going to get as rocked. You're going to save the peace, whatever, but then people will still be gunning for you probably after that if you keep doing what you're doing so i think this is like a very critical point for his game which is crazy because it's so early you right. think but um i hope for him like the way that he's been talking about it sometimes like i'm like you have it i was like go with it but i think he's just also unapologetically himself and isn't aware like as socially aware with some things but he seems sweet he was like I, crying I, over his birthday yeah. sandwich or so i hope he can I think- 
I hope he can position himself. I hope he can he can do something this week that kind of shifts the game, puts him in a power, uh, maybe like a power seat, but get him in there a little bit because I do feel like you know people just don't like him or whatever it is. Uh, I wanted to touch on on the thing where you're talking about him when he was talking to Anthony. I know a lot of people are seeing it that way too, where it's like he was telling Anthony what to play. I I look at it a little differently. Maybe he was. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. I, I looked at it as left like because for if what I remember, Anthony was sitting in the pantry and Vivek came up. And, and Anthony kept pulling people in one at a time and everyone was kind of out in like the family room or whatever you want to call it, the, 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 the living room. I don't know what you call it. And, and it's like, he was, I think the way I looked at it was Vivek was just saying, Hey, listen, man, like they're talking about you out there. Like you got to get out there, man, because you know, you're in here and they're talking about you out there. I don't think he was trying to teach him how to play. I think he was just trying to look out for him as like a buddy, like showing him like, Hey man, I, I'm looking out for you, man. Like get out there and talk to them. But I think Anthony took it that way. And I think a lot of people took it. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at it differently, but the way I looked at it was Vivek was just like, Hey man, they're talking about to, uh, out you that you should get out there and talk to them. Like I'm, I'm trying to help you here, not teach you how to play, but I'm trying to like, let you know, like what's going on out there, man, get out there because I felt like Anthony was sitting in that pantry for a long time and it was just almost like a revolving door. People were coming in one at a time alone, you know? And if you have like, you know, 10 people sitting in the family room and one at a time, everyone's going in to talk to Anthony. It's like, it's like, everyone's like, well, what are you talking about? Like what's going on in there? Like, oh, look, Anthony's talking to someone else. So it's like, it's like the big spotlights like, yo, Anthony's talking to this person now and then they leave and then, oh, now Anthony's talking to that person. So I looked at it differently, but I see both sides of it and, and maybe they're both right, you know? So I agree. When I first saw the conversation, I didn't get that vibe originally, but I think the whole thing with the, like you, again, you have to understand who you're talking to and like delivery and optics is all you have running for you in the main yeah. house. So if you're coming, just even if you're going with, I think the intent was good. You have to know how to deliver it to someone like Dougie. Like, you yeah. know that Anthony has this really strong presence. He's coming in. And even by the way that he's calling people in, you have to like feed into whatever hit a little bit into that to be like, man, like you're doing such a good job. But like, you know, like I'm, I'm also like, I want to work with you on a little work. Like there's ways to go about it that I, I agree. think that Vivek just tries to get straight to it because he, he really like wanted to work with Dougie and he admired him. And like, you could tell there was like, you know, he wants to be like you know good with him and, and build trust with him but i just think maybe the delivery because it's like multiple people reading that it's just like vivek if it's not working the first three times you got to switch it up a little bit or do something else with the delivery because sometimes when he does talk to other people i didn't see it so much in the anthony conversation but sometimes when he talks later he's like yeah but you got to do this and this and i don't think he's saying it as in like a dictator right. dictator way but i think that it's coming off sometimes like that like as if you know how you're running this way in the game and there's no freaking way you know how it's running because like ha no you just don't you just don't it's not possible <laughs> no good points good points uh, for sure uh Shania, do you know who the nominees are or potential nominees i don't think there's noms yet right just potential um i thought i thought bailey am i right about that yeah. and who else um elijah's the the pawn again so I, apparently it's <laughs> See, uh, that's so lame. Uh, <laughs> I just like one. I'm rooting for Bailey. Um, kind of you brushed on it, like her conversation with Anthony. It kind of just gave me like, Ooh, you know, like I I appreciate that she <laughs> stuck up for herself. I I dig that because that's not easy in that house. It's not easy to speak your mind and to stick up for yourself. And so I think she's a baddie, and I just think it's gonna be so boring. Like. If that's actually what happens, if Bailey's the target and then she goes, like, one, that's such a freaking lame HOH because it's so predictable and you're just, you're giving Anthony what he wants. Like, she's clearly willing to, and, like, I don't watch the Daily, so you guys probably know a little bit more than I do, but from, like, what I've seen, I feel like she's not afraid to give it back to him. And, in fact, her and Donna were the yeah. ones who were starting to see through his smoke screen a little bit and they we're bold enough to bring it up to spicy. Mm -hmm. It's like that takes a lot of brains. So having her go, I just think is like putting out the red carpet for Anthony to continue to dominate the house, which is like good for him, but kind of boring for us. And right. also just, I mean, it goes to show like if Anthony makes it to the end, he could claim that HOH is his really. Like it's you're you're playing into his hand a little bit, so I don't know. That's so boring. I don't want to see that. Yeah, no, you're you're right, and that's the thing. It's but now is that 
to is now how do you look at it is it is that credit to anthony's game like is he just that good that he can convince vivek what to do or do you think that's what vivek wants to do because you know bailey did kind of get in his face and yell at him and they had that blow so it's 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 tough because you know bailey is technically a, a target for vivek because she's been talking about him and she's been you know they got that big yeah. blowout whatever it is it's tough i mean I, I could see both ways i think that was a very good point you made where it's like anthony's because anthony's very good at talking he is very good when he sits down he's very soothing he knows you know he uses big words and he he you know he's just he's a good talker he's a good talker but he's also but also at the same time i think he's a bad talker i think i think he's like very good in some points but I, like you guys say he's not gentle enough i think he's very um just like he, he just i don't know I, I feel like when he knows he's safe he's he's definitely um i don't know i don't know but he's just he's good in some senses but i think it's very bad in other senses i think he's kind of like it's there's no middle for him it's either really good or really bad uh, uh kind of thing with anthony but yeah like this is what i'm saying now like right now the potential noms are bailey and elijah but i will and i, I mean i obviously don't know i mean the, i don't even know if they're even nommed like these are just the, the the word going around right but i i don't think either one of them are gonna go this week i think uh, v is gonna you know v's gonna v i think that's what's gonna happen i think v's gonna v and, and something else is going to happen by the end of this. Maybe Bailey and V sit down and actually get a breakthrough where it's like, hey, listen, man, like I'm targeting Dougie, not you. And and like Dougie's targeting you. Like we should put him on the block, get him out, backdoor him, see you later. Like, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like that conversation has to happen for Bailey. I think Bailey's best move is, is, is she's got to make something happen. She has to make something happen. And I think she has that fight in her. I really do. Uh, she's definitely, she's got that fight 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'll be surprised. Um, I'm not gonna like say too much on it, but there there is a conversation that was had recently between Bailey and Vivek. Um, and she honestly navigated it so well. The thing that I, I find most interesting about Bailey, which I wasn't expecting, is I thought she was gonna be a little bit more of like a spicy V type of player because like some of the things like she she gets very into her emotions and she reacts mm -hmm. very like you can read it on her face like she doesn't do poker faces like she has this hilarious scene in the bedroom where she like vivek just wins and she's like what do you want me to do tell me what to do like kayla and spicy v are telling her like you just got to be nice like you don't have to be overly nice but you, you can't let him show like you can't show your cards right now because it'll make you more of a chart oh, what do you want me to do what do you want me to do and she go, does his face and she's like you want me to tell him i'm so happy you win and I'm so happy you won. She has like these like little outbursts and things that I personally die laughing over. But she has this really, really nice conversation with Vivek. And she really explains her point of view, which I think is genuine with like how she views emotionally and things like how she looks at the game. And she's like, you know what? Like between us, it was like a personal attack I felt. And I thought we were so good personally that like I felt like the onus was on you to come to me because you hurt me. And just being able to like talk about her feelings and her perspectives so clearly and so straightforward like i think it really translated well in that combo and i'm i have high hopes that it could lead to something else um i think if you're going to take a shot at spicy or dougie you got to do it through a back door you're not yeah. doing that blatantly on the block like that like that is a big bold maybe later in the week like weeks to come thing that you could you can't do a back door on that so i think if he is putting two people up that like aren't them or if like he has a bigger like target in mind which like i don't know who else he would think is like a bigger target right now than the all-stars um then he would have to like i have hope for that that he's gonna like make a move out of his thing versus like which bailey put it great like she said a great point in her conversation she's like i can accept game wise if you're coming after me because you think it's a detriment to your game but if it's just because i got mad at you because you threw me under the bus I'm going to be upset about that, right? So, like, I don't know if she's doing it more personally if she's coming from, like, an emotional standpoint. It's just working really well in this conversation or she, like, means game-wise of, like, how to... Mm -hmm. But I thought she navigated it great. And so I have hope for that. Um, and I and I think she's... The way that she's able to have these really serious conversations, even with Dougie and this and that, and be so clear and, like, great with her, like, arguments, but then also be this kind of, like, oddball, wild thing and, like, you know, responding so emotionally. Like, I love to see that and i think it's just like to have like a female representing that too and to like the message with that that you can still be like goofy and erratic and this and that but then also have these serious gameplays is something like i wish like i was able to translate more like on my thing because i'm off the rails like all the time rambling and saying 
stupid stuff. But I think also, like, I I love the strategy. I love the game. I love this. Mm-hmm. So I think she's actually starting to do that. And, I, and I'd and i love to see a few more DRs with her to to push that. So I have hope. But I don't know. We'll see. I would have loved to see, and I and I'd be honest. I would have loved to see this season without the, the vets because I think that the cast I think would have delivered without the vets, and I think with the vets in there, all these players had to shift the way they think, shift the way they play. They're not playing, I think, how they normally would have played, and I think it's just, I think it's it's sinking a lot of their games in a different way. I think if they just if there was no vets, there would have been a different power structure. I think it would have. I, I think this cast could have delivered. I, I, I don't know. Um, Shania, what do you want to see this week? Okay, first I want. Know who you guys are cheering for. So, Shane, who are you cheering for? Who do you want to see leave this week? And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Hmm, who do I want to see leave? I mean, okay, look, I know it's crazy, but I wouldn't be opposed if Dougie left. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's possible. It. I don't mm-hmm. I like the guy. Like we said, he's an awesome guy. But I just like there's something so satisfying about seeing someone he's- who's kind of on a high horse, kind of crumble a little bit. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, gosh, I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to say. I feel like there's a lot of players that we're not even really getting to see. You know, mm-hmm. there's like Lexus, Kayla, we haven't seen a lot of, Matt, um, Todd even. Like, we haven't really seen enough of those players for me to even say. Um, I definitely feel like Lexus and Matt are getting the, like, showman's edits where they're not going to show anything. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess yeah, it's like... If I had to choose just for the sake of it, I would say Dougie just because I think that would be wild. It'd be crazy. It'd be, it'd be, I mean, listen, for entertainment purpose, that'd be amazing. That'd be great to see. I mean, you know, I, you know, Dougie and I, we do get along in the real world, but yeah, this is a game and I want to see things happen. You know, I want to see, you know, I want to see plays. I want to see big moves. That's why I watch a show. I like to see when, and, People don't just do what everyone wants them to do. I want people to make these decisions, make those hard choices. I'm going to say right now, if at any time for anybody watching this video, I'm going to tell you right now, if there's ever a returnee on your season, except if it's me, if it's me, let me be, but anybody else or, or these two lovely ladies, anybody else. Okay. Vote them out. Don't let them cook. Don't let them build. Just get rid of them. Like that's, that's the play like period. Just don't even, don't listen to them. Don't let them, you know, cook. Don't let them build. Don't let them, you know, finesse you. You see a returning player, get them out. And then, then you play your game because they're, they have, yeah, it's the experience. Like again, no disrespect. I just think that would be wild. You know, it's like, it would be crazy to see the tables turn like that. Yeah, I just I want to see I want to see uh, what the season would be like. I'm happy for both of them that they're there. Like, there's no shade at all. But I want to see these players play. I think I think these players could deliver on their own. But you're right. There's no Todd. We don't see Todd. We don't see Tola. We don't see. Uh, we barely see Dennis. You know, shout out Dennis. Love Dennis. But like, I I think that's not necessarily a bad thing because if they're not being talked about or shown, it's because they're not really in danger. So it, it's 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 you know not necessarily a bad thing. But at the same time, I want to see them play a little bit. Yeah, Lexus. I think I, I want to know more about Lexus. I mean, I. I think Lexus, uh, there's something about her. I want to know more. Uh, Kayla, same story. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, uh, Elijah, like, I don't know anything about that. All I know is everyone loves them, you know? So, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I definitely want to see things happen. I want to see the house get shaken up a little bit. I hope Vivek does a move that's good for his game. And I hope, you know, these people start stepping it up. Renee, what about you? What do you want to see happen this week? Who do you want to see go? And who you, oh, and who you're cheering for? I want to know who you're both cheering for. Yeah. Nate, do you want to say who you're cheering for? Uh you know what? I feel like I'm pretty team Bailey right now. Uh, especially cause like, I feel like her number one just went home. And mm-hmm. again, like I said, I love an underdog, love an underdog story. She's a baddie. She was riding for the girl. We're here for that. But also curveball. I'm going to say Matt, he's the only BC person. Um, and I know we haven't seen a lot of him, but from the little that we have seen, it sounds like he's like a super nice dude. Yeah. Uh, apparently I saw Donna post something. Apparently he's like hilarious. Um, so rooting for him too. I think I hope that he'll have some more screen time. And then I'm definitely rooting for Dennis as well. I think it's rad to have someone on there who's a little bit older and is just like sees it how it is. So those are my top three. Yeah, I like Dennis. As you can tell, you know, Team Dennis. We go. That's uh, 
was wondering. You know, if the vets, I mean, obviously I'm training for the vets too, but I, I, I love yeah. Dennis. I, I love Dennis. I absolutely love the guy. Uh, I'm all, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in team Dennis. Let's go. He's bad. He yeah. seems so cool. I can't wait to like, just get out and like, I mean, all of them. I'm stoked to right. meet all of them, but yeah, right. he seems super, super cool. Yeah. And he's got so much, he's his fashion. I mean, the guy, I love him, man. He's good. I like him. Yeah. Like I said, he's older, he's 48 and uh, yeah. the hair. What about you, Renee? Who do you like? Who do you want to see go home? Let's hear. Um, like a little bit of a hot take on this. I think like I'm not a hundred percent ready to see um a vet walk this week. And why do I say that? I think that these players, I agree a hundred percent. If it wasn't a uh, all star, like bring back whatever season, I think this cast is strong enough on its own to create the chaos that it needed to create. Like the one thing I really that really stood out for me is like all of them really do seem like they've at least seen like all of the seasons or, or they're, they've been invested in the dailies or the live feeds or whatever. So I think they're like super gamey and, and like ready to be there. And you can see that hunger. And I love that. Um, I think I want to see how the, these like newbies kind of like actually take these shots and like deal with conflict with like an all-star player and like work around that. I think there's something intriguing to me about that. Like if you're standing in final two and you can, like, spin this whole, like, narrative. I look at the long picture, too, so that it might be too far ahead. But, like, if you can say, like, I literally could see, I ended up seeing through, like, the smoke screen, and I talked to the talker and out-talked the talker. Like, there's something, like, interesting to that for me that I kind of want to see, like, squeeze out a little bit more. Do Is that necessarily, like, me saying, like, I want to see the vets take it all? No, I just think it's, like... A really cool dynamic if once you get like your comfort and you're, you're working like this situation you have all these like strong forces in that house like what i think this is like a great season to bring in those types of players like these like also forces and see like how that you know friction like where that gets taken so i have a little bit of a hot take on that like i i don't know if i'm ready just to see one of them walk out but i do want to see like even like a representation for all stars like and seeing like okay when you come back and then you have all these like things against you how do you play because like I feel like I'm a bit biased like I felt like I had a lot of like hurdles in the game so like I had to play it like very I couldn't build as deep of like personal relationships to CC and Nene as I wanted to because I was like running around making sure I always had like a vote or like enough of a surface level like relationship to you know get farther but i'm like curious to see on both fronts like how do these newbies navigate that how do the all-stars navigate that so i want to see like a little bit more of that like thing kind of go and like that conflict kind of come in will it end up being like an entertaining narrative maybe maybe not um in terms of who i'm rooting for um so actually you know what on the who i kind of want to see i i really don't i'm sorry if this is like not the nicest i don't care to see tola go i don't care to see um who's the who's the other one i think it's like mainly like tola i i i don't i'm just not getting it from him i'm just like there's something about him i he's not doing it for me i'm just like if you go you go if you stay what are you doing right. for me? I, I just don't know. I feel like there was heat on him. Now he doesn't have it on him, which maybe it's good. But I just, I, I don't know. I haven't seen him do much even in the dailies. Like, that's, I think that's one of the problems is like with the dailies, you don't get to know any. Like, I don't know Todd. I don't know Lexus. I don't know Matt. I don't know Tola. Like Tola, especially. Tola's just not even there. I, he's, he's, he'll walk in a room. Like, they'll show a conversation of two people talking for like 20 minutes. And then he, as soon as he walks in, they cut it to something else. Like, he's not even on the dailies. Like, he's not even there. So. Yeah. so already omitted like even like edit wise even with the daily so like i don't know he's just not doing it for me like right now so mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't care to see him go it's not that i want to see him go right. um in terms of who i'm rooting for i love me some bailey you know i'm a little worried for her you know mm -hmm. sometimes with her responses i think donna was that like grounding force like that calm for her and i'm worried for her without that not saying that she can't play without her but you know not having your person that you can confide yeah. in and like losing that is like super big in the game um but um i love bailey i agree with about matt i'm like on the fence about matt because i think i like his personality but he's super nice guy more, like, like oh i think he has a great like he seems like such a sweetie like i'm like oh my god no just joking um but he's he seems really sweet but i i haven't seen like 
that like game talk or that like edge to him or that side that it's like are you gonna be able to make these moves like i get some of that vibe from lexus like she left you know a little spicy message for donna there i was like it's kind of on wrong facts girl but you know what spicy regardless i i have like I'm like on the fence about um, Lexus, Matt, and Kayla. Like I have good feelings about them, but I, I just don't know if they're there. But I'm definitely rooting for some Dennis and Bailey. Let me tell you. <laughs> and you know what? Even Elijah. I'm going to throw Elijah on just because he has a little soft spot in my heart. Because he's like, you know what? People think because I'm on the block, like I'm not actually strategizing and doing these things. I was like, and again, I sympathize with that because it like when you're the face of the block you're just tied to the block and it looks like you're not doing anything and if you can't win a damn comp which they're very hard to people let me say let me say they're um, tough that's like that's your whole like identity in the game so yeah. i think like him even saying that like i'm i'm curious to see i think he thinks he's more of a mastermind than he is sorry elisha 100 percent. yeah also i would like to see like does he have that in them like can he move these pieces is he able like does he have He's really liked socially, but, like, there's a difference of being, like, liked socially versus having social equity in the house where you can actually move things. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see where he goes with his, like, narrative, like, or with his gameplay on that regard. Because it's, it's very hard. Like, you can be liked so much, like, mm-hmm. so well. But if you don't have that persuasion or that ability to, like, and again, it depends on the people you're working with and, like, who's in your house, but... If you don't have that ability to be like, hey, like, I'm saying this time, like, I don't want to go up on this block or like, I think this needs to be done. Is he being listened to? I don't know. I don't see it because of how he's getting painted. Like that label will weigh down on him eventually. Like it's a heavy identity to carry in a game like that. That's a very good point. And that's, that's the thing I, I, I talk about the same thing. It's like, you could be liked by everyone, but you can also be very disposable. And I think that's the thing. I think everyone likes them and they're, they're cool with them. And then it's like, well, you know what? we like you, but you got to go and uh, too bad. That's like, that's, you know, I think he's kind of in that spot right now where people love him and they don't want to see him go, but they'll still vote him out when it's time, you know, and uh, no shade to the guy. I mean, I don't know him obviously, but uh, I, I agree. I agree. I just, I don't think he's as good as he thinks he is. Yeah. It's a dangerous spot to be in. Like, honestly, if he can spin it, um, I have hope for him. Like the reason why he's in my top little like pool pick is because like he has hope to spin it um, because it's, Especially when you're viewed as disposable. It's one thing if you're likable enough to be put on as a pawn and you're like working with a team and you're helping them go and you're just like, you just were assigned that role, whatever. But when you're viewed as disposable, like I, I think people really underestimate how damaging that is to your game. Um, because again, like similar thing, like I, I wasn't ever like hated in the house, but like th- there was no doubt that if there was a name to go up on that block and, you know, Zach, you know, painted a little bit of that for me so kindly in the beginning of the game and whatever i just picked up but if people are like actually okay seeing you walk out and there's no like even it you don't you're not just a pawn anymore you're like actually like a valid option at some point if all else goes haywire in that house and when you have players like spicy or dougie or like even bailey too like who can really like stir up the conversations and have like that those moments like or those sparks go off in the house like your game is at risk almost every time you touch that block. For sure. Even if you're up against a big player, like it's pawns go home all the time. And when you're a disposable pawn at that, like there's likable pawns, I think, and there's disposable pawns. And if you're a disposable pawn, honey, just pray for yourself because it's a hard position to be in. It is so like, there's no reassurance. And I think he's going off of like this false reassurance because he's so believing this directors and they got my back and they got the, if I was in his position, I'd be like, get me out of that spot immediately. Yeah. Okay, like yeah. the second I got dead last, game over. The second like Zach painted this thing on me, like you carry that. Like you want to get away from it. Like don't sit there and be like, yeah, I think I'd be a good op. Run from that damn block. <laughs> Especially if you you don't have that social equity or pull. Run. Bye. So I think I'm I think he has hope, but I hope he's smarter than what he's letting on. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I agree. I think, I think he thinks he's smarter than he, at least from what we've seen, anyway. Uh, ladies, I want to say you guys were awesome. I, I've kept you guys for a while. I don't want to keep you guys too long. First, I want to say both your lighting is perfect, like phenomenal. You guys have perfect lighting. It's great. Uh, you guys were amazing. You guys were really. You guys are both fantastic. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your out of your day to do this. We ha- we absolutely have to do this again. You, you guys were awesome. You guys were so good and so fun. Hi. 
I love chatting with you guys. Is there anything you guys want to close with? Uh, Shanae, Renee, what do you guys want to close with? Shanae, go first. What do you want to close with? What do you want to say on the way out? Is there anything you want to, that, that you didn't get to say that you want to say? Uh, anything you want to plug? Is there anything you, whatever you want, go for it. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I think just, um, I'm thinking back to Janine's eviction, someone who was a super fan of the show. I think what people need to remember is that you're never going to know how you're going to react until you're in that house. So give people the grace. Yeah, it's fun to sit there and say your opinions. And, you know, we just did that for an hour and a half. We all have our opinions. But damn, you will be tested in ways emotionally, mentally, physically in that house that you have never or probably will never experience before. So just bear that in mind. Like, these people are out there and they're doing their best. And I think all ways to play the game are valid some are just more interesting to talk about than other <laughs> yeah that very 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 good point i actually i say that all the time it's like you know you could be the, the the funniest person in your group the most liked person in your group at home you're popular you're the best athlete you're the best whatever when you get in that house everyone in there thinks they're the best athlete the most popular the most social whatever it is so now you're face to face with you know 15 16 other big personalities or great athletes or social players or whatever it is and it's it's a lot harder than people think it's a lot harder than, these are big personalities so even the ones that are quiet in there when you meet them like you're gonna meet some awesome people at finale and hopefully you're both there uh uh, you're gonna see like even the quiet ones in the house they're like the wildest at finale now you're like well, where did this come from you know so uh yeah you guys are gonna love it so uh thank you and and renee anything you want to close in with anything you want to say anything you want to plug anything at all you guys this is yours no i i literally nene put it perfectly she's great at words with that kind of stuff and i i think just like having grace about it but i'm very excited to see how this season plays out i'm very excited to pop into the finale i i think we're gonna be there and stuff and it's nice just sitting and chatting like on this end of of the game you know like being a fan again like watching this gameplay and not living the trauma and stress and <laughs> making sure that Nina's going to use her veto and all that fun stuff. So I think this is a, a fun end to be on and I'm excited to be in the space and, and have a chat with you guys. That was awesome. Yeah. Honestly, you guys are amazing. Both of you did such a really, really good job. I'm so thankful you guys came on. I'm an honorary uh, girly pop. I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing myself in. I don't even, I'm not even asking. I'm just, I'm just joining. That's it. <laughs> you my stamp. It's the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. I want to say, honestly, I really appreciate that. And make sure you check out their, their Instagrams, Twitters, all that stuff. I'll put all your links in the, in the description below. Check them out guys. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the season and thank you again for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.